Welcome back to AFTV, everyone's full-time show, your chance to have your say. Lots to unpack. Arsenal drew 2-2 with Bayern Munich. It's not a draw I'm celebrating. It's not a performance I'm gutted by. It's not the end of the tie. It's not us practically out. But it's not the advantage we wanted to take there. It really hangs in the balance. Yeah, it leans towards Bayern. I think we can hurt them. Loads of talking points. We're going to get all your thoughts. Who was your man of the match? Should we have had a penalty at the end there? We've got a poll running with already 50 50% split in the votes saying yes, Saka should have had a penalty. 50% saying no. We're going to explore that, get your take on all of it. And understand what wasn't right about Arsenal tonight because there was definitely something missing. Like there was something tetchy about Arsenal's performance tonight. Almost like they themselves weren't quite mentally ready for this stage. Mm. And I know that feels harsh to say because the performance, you know, in a lot of ways you dominated by Munich. How many teams can say that? But there were moments in the game that I felt looked uncharacteristic from Arsenal. So we're going to break it all down. Yeah. Frank, you've done your fan cam. If I... if. If one side is, I'm delighted, the other side is gutted. Let's put it this way. 10 is delighted, one is gutted. Where, give me a number. Where on the spectrum are you? Because I'm a five. I'm bang in the middle. I'll go four. You're and nearer the, gutted. Nearer than, gutted. Yeah. And the reason behind that is because I don't quite recognise the Arsenal team that we saw in that first half. Yeah, and I yeah. think ultimately that's been the undoing today. You know, we've been praised so so much for our defensive ability and defensive capabilities this season specifically you know when was the last time Arsenal were in the conversation for one of the teams that have conceded the least goals in a season um, you know we, we talk every week about how William Saliba and Gabriel are the best partnership in the world at the moment um, for me that is possibly the worst game I've seen William Saliba have for Arsenal so you know I think it definitely comes down to that first half performance that he was been, poor he was absolutely and you know we give credit where credit's due so we've got to give criticism where criticism's due as well but we don't just give credit we big these guys up loads because yeah. they deserve it I think William Saliba is a generational talent yeah. and I think he is going to go on to become if he stays at yeah. Arsenal he can become a club legend he can win the major mm. honours and he can become a top 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 centre back if he isn't a top centre back already but yeah. He really struggled tonight. Absolutely. That was in his touch and his yeah. decision making. That doesn't mean he didn't show his quality at times. Of course. But there were moments. And I think Saliba is maybe an example of where a lot of players struggle. Mm -hmm. I think Kai Havertz struggled to get into the game. Saka brilliant with the goal, but other moments weren't quite right. Um, Gabriel was far from his best. Kivior rightly hooked at half time. Yeah. Ben White should have scored, but then how often does he find himself in that position? So there's a lot of players we can talk about. Martinelli wasn't as effective but, as he wanted but to the, be. At the same time, I feel like Jorginho struggled. Yeah, Rice wasn't that involved. But at the same time, I feel like there's quite a few players that we can give a bit, bit, give a bit of praise as well. Bakayo Saka being one of them. 31st goal involved. Brilliant in goal. Yeah, you're I thought right. he played Brilliant really goal. well as well. My man of the match today, Martin Odegaard. I think Phenomenal. from minute one to minute 90 didn't give up and that's exactly what we should work rate was unreal from a captain obviously yeah. don't, don't get me wrong sometimes at, at points his end product wasn't quite there which is what we've expected from Martin Odegaard in the past few years I suppose but the work ethic he, the work rate that he showed from minute one to minute 90 was superb and you know for that I, I've got to commend him yeah I, I agree Jesus made a big impact as well let's talk about this with Coolis who's joining us first Mans is joining us Mans how you doing Mans oh hi lads I'm Oh my god. Got it. Got it. So frustrating. I've Oh my god. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it within me just because we've been so brilliant in the league this season and just because we still can get into the semifinals and I still think we will. I'm gonna try to contain myself, but what a terrible performance. You think what you did terrible the, you go that far? Against the crap side Honestly, mm. because I what actually like a lot of fans don't do. I actually watch other leagues and I do follow Bayern Munich and in Bundesliga and I've seen them in the Champions League. They are crap, absolute crap side. I don't care about the brand name. I don't care that it's Bayern Munich. You you watch them against Bayer Leverkusen. You watch them at home against Dortmund. You watch them at, at home against a team I've never even heard of in, on the weekend, going two nil up and losing to three two. 
You watch them all season. They are not a good side of football. They are not. We are miles ahead. Uh, miles I, I, ahead. Do you I, I, know why we drew them? Do you know why we drew them? Because we're emotional. Just That's the only reason. We are an emotional football side. We hear that Champions League anthem and we go and we just go berserk. I don't understand why. I actually agree with that last line. I actually agree with that last line that tonight we looked emotional and like the occasion we gets to so us a little bit. We are so emotional, James. But, but I disagree so with a lot of the rest and yeah, Frank does no, too. Go that's on. what I'm saying. So, I, I, again, I, I completely agree with both of you in the terms of, you know, we hear that Champions League music and we get a bit emotional and that can come down. Obviously, we're a very young side. A lot of these players haven't been in this position before. Um, but where I do disagree, and I understand Bayern Munich aren't having a fantastic season, you know, six league defeats already. And in some cases, they don't get six league defeats in two seasons. And I get that and I understand that. But where I think it's different in the, when it comes to the Champions League is because they're struggling so much domestically I actually believe there is you know there's there's more you know incentive to do it in Europe and play better in Europe and we have to give Bayern Munich credit to that I actually think they played very well they you know they, they jumped on the mistakes that Arsenal were making and they obviously they punished us for that we was in a situation where I believe we had up to I think 11 or 12 shots in the game they had two scored two so I think they done extremely well today yeah no, but I don't think they've done well at all I, I actually genuinely think Bayern Munich didn't have to do anything much today to get a 2-2 draw. I think Bayern Munich relied on individual that. players and in individual moments to literally get a draw today. If we played our game, and if we played anywhere near like we've played against Brighton or what we've been doing recently, we would have gone 3-4-0 easily. Don't get this get away from you. We would have won this game easily today. So, man, emotion- I agree with... Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you that. I, I agree with... I agree with if you'd approach this more like Brighton, I think we'd have done a lot better. I think if we just not played the occasion as much, if we looked to stifle Bayern a little bit more and not focus so much on our football, we clearly did something different because suddenly we were building up, well, Kivior comes back out of nowhere. Um, Jorginho and Erdegaard are the two in build-up. So he clearly tam- you know, tampered with things, Arteta, and it didn't really work. Um, but Bayern, Bayern were weird because I felt when we were 1-0 up, I wasn't that impressed by Bayern at all. But then once they got the two goals, which were gifts, I actually thought then they became really difficult to play through. And they did actually recognise, you know what, we're 2-1 up and we can hit them on the counter. I thought Kane was brilliant. His passing range was superb. And they were difficult to play through until one man came on. That was Gabriel Jesus. He, for me, it was second to Erdegaard for man of the match. I thought he was brilliant. And Gabriel Jesus has kept us in the sky. Yeah, he has. Absolutely. He has. Jesus has kept us in this tie. But I'm telling you, James, what you've said here right now is literally us. We gave them confidence and we gave them something to hold on to Yeah. in order to bring the... What, what should have really happened, given our form in our league and given their form in their league and given what the season they're having and given the season that we're having, we should have won 2-3-0 and every single pundit and every expert that's going to discuss this game tomorrow should have said, well, Arsenal are through to the semi-finals. That's what, exactly what should have happened. Don't get it this never game. works I'm telling like you, that. Don't let this get away from you. No, but it never I'm works you, don't like that. Don't let this get away from me. That's exactly what should have happened. But okay, but the Centurions get knocked out by Monaco, or no, that was the year before. To be fair, and I then know, Leon, and then you know, like, and then they're one 0 up at the Bernabeu in the ninety-first minute, and they get like the, the Champions League. Like you're coming up against these sides. The reason there is because they got immense quality. It's so frustrating, though. It's just it, of, so cor- of, of course, Leroy Sane. Trust me. You know, Leroy Sane. He is crap. But Leroy Sané is one of the most overrated players on the planet. I, honest, I see him getting by mediocre fullbacks. Mediocre fullbacks close them down easily in the Bundesliga and in the Champions League. We let him. We let him travel this distance. Are you for real? No, oh look, we, we 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 definitely had some shit the bed moments. But let me ask you one final oh question. Oh my god! Let me ask you one I, I final. Think, <laughs> I know you're disappointed. You know what? So I, still I think we'll go through. I still think we'll go through. I think, I think we'll That's go to fair. Munich and I think we will win the game. But what happened today can never happen again. It cannot happen in the semi final. And hopefully, if we make it into the final, it cannot happen there as well. well I, let me... not, I refuse to believe in my mind that we will go out to this crap Bayern Munich side, one of the worst Bayern Munich sides. But their I've players ever aren't seen. crap, their manager's not crap. They've been poor this season, but... Their manager is one of the most overrated yeah. managers in the last 15 years in my but mind. But, mate, we, we finished... We finished eighth 
And then Arteta galvanised us to win an FA Cup against City and Chelsea, who were better than us that year. Like, there is something about when you've got one thing to play for, you galvanise your team, you focus on it in a different way, you maybe regroup because you're the underdogs for that particular tie. And you can, and, and actually your quality shows in a different way. Like, like Bayern just sucker punched us tonight a little bit. No, oh, they did. They did, James. And that's the thing. They, you, can't, you can't get away with it in some games. But that doesn't mean Bayern Munich are a good side. And no, yes, I, I do agree you. with you. Indiv- individually, their players, Kane and Musiala, I do rate them very highly. But the thing is, this manager has sucked out the life out of this team, Thomas Tuchel. And the only reason they've come out come out of here with a 2-2 draw is because we've given it to them. I, I do agree what with that. What really too, should have happened is Ben White should have scored that second goal one-on-one. And then mentally, they would have been down. They wouldn't. They're never coming back to that game if it's a two-nil game. Yeah. And then that stupid, oh, ugh, that Gabriel and Raya misunderstanding happened. And then yeah, yeah. somehow this mediocre football player of a Leroy Sané takes out Rice out of the game. It just never should have happened. That's the frustrating bit. Like when we got Bayern, I was actually celebrating. I was actually more confident today than I was against Porto. Because I knew we weren't going to get a team. We weren't going to get a, get a team that's going to park the bus against us. That's going to play open football. And that's very good for us. Because I think the way we are and the way our system plays, the way Arteta has installed, installed us as a team throughout the last two years, it's very good to play against a team that's not parking the bus against us. And they didn't park the bus. And they still somehow got away with a 2-2 draw. Almost got a win in the end. Man. the post. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, man. I appreciate your passion, and oh, I know yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah, no. no, no, mate, you're always a class call. We'll hear from you next week, and hopefully we've turned it around as you think we will. All right, guys. Thanks. In Thank a bit, you. my friend. In a bit. I get the frustration. I get the frustration. By the way, actually, uh, Ryan on production, if we can just get... There was a super chat I missed. If you mind just sending that through to my WhatsApp, because I don't want to miss people's super chats. So apologies. Um, but uh, we're going to go to Hugo in a sec, Frank, but... I get his frustration, like, they've gone in in bad form. Did we show... I'm inclined to say that we looked at that form and didn't show them enough respect. We didn't respect the competition. We were so, like... Yeah, it's just play our football. Jorginho got on the ball. Oh, God, let's play, let's play. Oh, we're running back towards our goal again. No, absolutely. And do you know what? And I think one thing, you know, obviously everyone's got a right to their opinion and I respect that fully. I think the one thing that I don't think he respected necessarily in what he was saying is obviously you buying are having a crap season. Okay. By their standards, they're having a terrible season, but this is still Bayern Munich. Mm-hmm. And you know, the fact that they're performing so badly domestically, would give them extra incentive to perform in the Champions League and we saw that today yeah. I didn't agree with what he said about Leroy Sane for me Sane is another one of those players that are floating along the lines of world class and I think we saw the level of ability maybe that it, it takes away from the fact that Kivior had a terrible game today as mm-hmm. well but the way he twisted and turned Kivior didn't didn't help and I feel like Bayern need to still be respected in a way and we can't look too much at how they're performing domestically especially going into the second leg you know while they've been struggling they've only been beaten at home twice this season and that's against Werder Bremen and Dortmund when you look at those two teams yes we can definitely go there and get a result but it's not going to be an easy task yeah fair enough let's get Hugo our next caller by the way there's some people saying that Bayern should have had a penalty when uh, Gabriel touched the ball with his hand and Raya so Raya, I think, rolled the ball to Gabriel and he touched with his hand to retake the goal kick. They're saying it's a penalty, although I think they're probably right not to give that because it's a clear miscommunication. He's just retaken the goal kick. Anyway, let's get Hugo in. It does, does look like a clear ball there. How are we doing, mate? Oh, I'm good. King Arteta, great substitution. Uh, it was a great substitution, pretty- but let's be honest, did he get his 11 wrong? No, listen, that's the team that's been absolutely destroying other teams in the Premiership. Um, it, we've done really, really well. But there's three points I'd like to make. The first is inexperience that we'll go through. Mm-hmm. Second is Saka is world class. And third, VAR was shocking. Harry Kane should have been sent off. So we'll, we'll go through each point. I, I agree with, um, is it Frank? Yes. Frank, I agree with everything you just said, my friend. I think that Bayern Munich are still world-class. They've got world-class players. Leroy Sané, all right, given he hasn't scored a lot of goals this season, but he was an absolute pest today. 
you know, him or Saka were man of the match. And actually, when he was taken off from Bayern Munich and Cole, Kingsley Coleman came on, it kind of it. lost a bit of impetus. Mm. He was brilliant, Leroy Sané. And, he, and, you know, we were linked with him not so long ago. So I, I agree. And, and, and James, I also agree with you. I think perhaps we did take him too, like, lightly. This is the only thing that they're playing for now. They, they've kind of given up on the league. So they're putting all their eggs in one basket. And Harry Kane just did an interview on TNT Sports. Uh, and he said that we had prepared for this. We organised where we're going to counter-attack Arsenal. But at home, it's going to be different. So that kind of gives me a bit of hope. Uh, yeah, it gives know. me hope too. Gives me hope yeah, too. So, I... you know, it was, they were difficult. There was, it was, they played well. Let's, let's be honest. Bayern Munich didn't come back and we, we didn't roll them over. Although, and this is where I agree with King Arteta, the game turned when uh, Ben White missed that, that 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 chance. Would you guys agree with me? I don't know if it turned. It was just that that would have put it to bed for me. I think if we're tuning up at that point, I then think we retreat into a better shape. Absolutely. I think we then we acknowledge and accept our lead. I think Arsenal all got a little bit. I think we all got a bit excited at the not us. I mean, we're fans. We're allowed to, but I think the players got a bit excited at the one nil, and actually failed to recognise that those first ten minutes, Bayern started the better team. They were the ones on the ball playing, and then we start to work our way. The goal comes a little bit out of the blue because Saka does really well to nick it back and score. Yep. I think Havertz is involved. Can't quite remember. And then at that point, you're thinking, okay, great. But then we're we're going. We create the second chance. And then really, we're actually quite comfortable until what I believe is a David Raya error. I believe I him coming out creates a domino effect of just, you know, this was in control. Gabriel was just going to roll it back to Raya. He comes out. Gabriel goes, well, I can't give it back now because if I get this slightly wrong, Kane's going to intercept, mm. put it into an empty net. So we try turn, find Kivio, but he's doing it frantically. He wasn't planning to. Try to find Kivio. He gets passed slightly wrong and then they cut through us. Now, to be fair, they do well, Bayern, but Raya calls that chain reaction. Mm. I, I agree. I disagree with you. I think if, if uh, Ben White scores that, I think we're winning 5-1. I think they would have capitulated, um, you know. But that said, Maybe. something what the last caller said as well, people forget that Manuel Neuer has been out. Manuel Neuer made a massive difference. He set up that effectively. That was brilliant, the way he flicked the ball up. You know, he was being a bit cheeky. And then, Unreal. you know, the build-up plays a lot better with him. He's, they're, confident, they're a much more confident team. And he's been out. If Summer had been playing, or Sommer, or whatever it's called, had been playing, I think we would have probably scored a few more goals, you know, so that's one point. And, and going back to what you said, James, yes, I agree with you that Rhea was, it was a problem when Rhea, but the whole team looked a bit nervous. And this is where w w one of the points I want to make is about inexperience. When, you, when you're playing in these sort of games... Go on, please. No, no, go on. You, no, you're yeah, so yeah, I was just saying, with these inexperience, with, with these sort of games, you, grain, you gain experience, yeah? So it's like when you're going, like I wish Laurie was there, we talk about boxing, but there's certain fights that you need to gain that experience. And I to feel that we gain that experience in these sort of thing. You know, some of the older guards passes a bit too quick. You know, I know, I know Frank thinks that he was man of the match. For me, it was Saka, which I'll go into in a second. That's but, fair. you know, Gabriel Saliba looked a bit, you know, first time they started making mistakes, the occasion, first time we're in the quarterfinals for 14 years, you know, they're a young team. But remember, hopefully, touch wood, we're going to be in the, the Champions League next season. These, these are the sort of games that we're going to learn from as well. So, yeah, I definitely think that there was a lot of inexperience. And, and Bayern Munich have got a lot of experience. That's the 22nd, I think, consecutive quarterfinal. Uh, they've been in the Champions League. James knows the stats yeah. better than me. <laughs> but, I wish I knew that one, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they're the most experienced in the modern time at, at quarterfinal stage. And they've got an yeah. experienced manager. Um, I even think Arteta, King Arteta, kind of was a bit emotional today, which we haven't seen throughout the whole season. I don't know if I you noticed that. that as yeah, well. Yeah, I actually agree with so, that. I actually agree with that. Yeah. What he, did you so I thought I thought Saka, Saka was man of the match. I, I, and I know you got up a call, so I'm going to be quick. I think, you know, I thought Saka was absolutely brilliant today. People talk about him not being world-class, but something that people forget, Rio Ferdinand included, is his defensive work, especially in the first no, 10, no, I 15, agree with 20 that. minutes. Absolutely I agree. brilliant. He did work super hard, um, I agree. I agree. And Hugo, he should have we, had a penalty. Do you, 
You think it's a pen? We're going to ask our next caller that, but it's good to know you think it was a pen because we've been uh, we've been no, divided here. We've got a poll, but mate, it's always great to hear from you. And I know that you've no been championing this team from from early. So fair play, and can hopefully they deliver say, next week. Can I just week. say Ramadan? Uh, sorry, can I just say Eid Mubarak to everyone as well for tomorrow? So our, our Ramadan is finished now. So Eid Mubarak to all the viewers across the world as well on AFTV. And lovely speaking to you guys. Well, lovely speaking to you as always, Thank mate. You. Speak Thank soon. You, speak soon. All our next caller Thank is. You, who have we got joining us? I've got to ask about the sack of pen. We definitely got to get. Um, in fact, actually, while we're just waiting for our next caller, let me just get a super chat I missed because I know there was one I missed. I'm sorry, I'm a terrible host. Uh, it was from uh, Eric. Says I feel like Bayern played similarly to City last year, gave us possession and counter, and we weren't ready for it. I think we played this game very similarly to that that City game, and you could say the maturity came through because this time we didn't lose. Yeah, you know, but you're right. That's a very comparable game. Errors, you know, we do one thing and they capitalise. You're like, what? I mean, we've just been punished for that. Luckily, we got a chance to put this right. Uh, who's our next caller? Joseph's joining. Who we got? Joseph. Hello, Joseph. I. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Before I ask you, did you, I, I can't remember what you said? Penalty or Saka? Um, I, I don't think it's a penalty, uh, but uh, the way I feel about it is if it gets initially given by the referee, it doesn't get overturned by VAR. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, obviously, it doesn't get given without a referee and it doesn't get overturned. So that, that's how I feel about it personally. Joseph, where are you on this? Um, you know what? i got to be honest. Penalty or not, my focus was not that necessarily. It was it was the fact that, you know, VAR did not have the opportunity to look at it, Right. And I feel as though that was the only mistake VAR. that the ref made. Yeah, sure no, they did, the ref. I'm sure they did look. Uh, they do look at it, though. They, I mean, I know we don't always do. get yeah, to see it. Yeah. yeah, they do look at it. It's, it's, all, it's annoying for fans as an experience because they don't show us that they're looking at it. But often that's actually how you want VAR to work. They just quietly in the background will check it over. And then the ref actually blew his whistle to say, I've checked, no pen. He did all that. So I think they did have a look. Then we, we can talk about how they arrived at that decision um, of not calling, because to me that was an obvious penalty, you know. Um, but overall, what I want to say, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the team, and I feel as though that we are going to go to, um, to Brian and we're going to win that game. The way we played today, um, there was nerves in the first half, but when we came back in the second half, there was a little bit of composure. The team knew what they wanted to do. Um, so I believe the second leg is going to be fine. We're going to be good. We're going through. I feel I feel confident about the away game too, but I know you said it. So you guys quantify, or not quantify, but just like break it down. Why should we be excited? Because others would say you just had them at your home and you couldn't beat them. What makes you think you're doing at the Allianz where we get spanked every year? But I actually am also feeling quite confident. So take it away. Why, why are you feeling confident out there? There... There was a level of excitement in that the team started the game with. Um, they, we wanted to show up and show um, the rest of the world what we were capable of doing. And I think the occasion and the moment got in the way of a lot of our players. But I feel as though after this leg, it's, it's going to be different. The second leg is going to be entirely different. It's going to be business. Um, defensively, we're going to be um, at a different level. So I'm I'm actually more confident now than I was prior to the game today. So, yeah. I'm, well, because of the way the game went? They, they, because of the way the game went. Because if they try to come at us, I think it's going to be a different game. Okay. You know? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think it's I mean, going to be a different game. point. I think I know why I'm confident. Why are you confident, Frank? Well, obviously, I know. Well, we've we've made a thing in a way of you know performing quite well away from home recently, and like like I said, in that second half especially, I thought we performed a lot better. And uh, well, whatever. I mean, it wasn't really hard after that first half performance, but you know, it's been it's been done. You know, we've, we've, lesser teams have beaten Bayern at the Allianz this year. Obviously, I mentioned the teams that we're speaking about. If you know, if Werder Bremen can do it. <laughs> surely, surely Arsenal can do it. That, 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 I, I have that confidence. Like I said, you know, I think it's a different game away from home. Um, we know we didn't get the job done in the way we needed to at home. So, you know, I think we go to that away game, all guns blazing, in hope to get to the semi-finals. I'm confident for almost the reason you were saying, Joseph, that they're going to come and have a go now. And I'm a big, I'm a huge believer of this in football. I'm a believer in clarity. 
if you go out on that right. pitch and you know what you need to achieve, I think Arsenal went out on this pitch today with a well we want to have a go but we know they've got transition threats but we're at home so we kind of need to win the tie here but then we're struggling to get into it so do we try contain them and i said at one point in the game i went our best this was in the first half we were two one down and sane was nearly in for a third and i went our best hope of getting back into this game is actually not us trying to play more but us shutting them down shut them down and then the football will come it's the old saying when you go out on that pitch win your tackles first run hard and then the tech and the pass will come and i feel like we were gonna we're gonna go there with clarity and a lot of people might say what do you mean you know it's a level you're away from home you need to try win there we don't we need to stop Bayern Munich the the onus is on them at the Allianz to win this game we need to slow them down be compact like we were at the Etihad deny them transition moments will come play our way up the pitch a little bit and see if something can happen and I think we're gonna play better in that situation or they're gonna blitz us and I'm an idiot <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think they're going to blitz us. I think I think we're going to go there prepared. Um, I think we're we're going to have a plan that was the pressure is going to be off of us. And I think that was the 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 reason why the team showed up in a way that they showed up today in the first forty five minutes. Um, but after that first forty five minutes, the way we showed up in the second half, I'm I'm extremely certain that we're going to go over there. We're going to get. We're going to win. We're going to win in in, in, in 90. We're going to win. I am 100% certain that that's going to happen. I'll come back here next, is it Wednesday or Tuesday, Mm -hmm. and say that. But before I go, I just want to give our captain all the praise, the way he played today. Stunning. My goodness. My goodness. Like, all those side spaces, the way he was able to just maneuver and did what he did, that was impressive. Um, Yeah. But anyway, it's a pleasure speaking to you guys. It's always a pleasure, man. I hope I get... I hope I get to do this again. You were superb, and we'll definitely have you back, Joseph. Thank you for calling, mate. Right, Speak yeah. soon. Let's uh, let's go through some super chats. Sir uh, Gudra, is that a Pokemon it reference? Is, it is. You're talking to two Pokemon Gudra, fans. Gudra is a Pokemon. Is that, is that a Pokemon reference? He says, uh, probably not. He says, unfortunately, it wasn't a pen. Saka sticks his leg out to initiate contact while Norris stays still. Let's stop being biased here. I agree. This and is, I, I don't, I don't think yeah. I don't think it's a clear and blatant dive. This is what I'm saying. I think yeah. in football, people too often yeah. want to go, that's a dive or that's a foul. Yeah. They want to make it black and white. I believe there is wiggle room in there. You might think of I'm course. doing too much to protect our star boy, but I believe there is wiggle room in there for Bakai Saka shattered. He's been running all mm-hmm. game. He's excited and sprinting onto the ball because this could win it yeah. for Arsenal. He's sprinting yeah. and he's thinking probably, I'm going to get this touch around. Yeah. But I'm not going to make a great effort to then change my body direction and avoid Neuer. Yeah. Because if he does come into me, I'm going to win a yeah. pen. Now, that could just be playing for contact, mm-hmm. anticipating contact. Yeah. But the thing is, if on the replay, when the pen's not given, you look like you've not tried to get out the way and follow the ball where you've just knocked it, and your stride takes you somewhat into Neuer, your right leg looks quite wide, which it did, they're never going to give it. They're going to say you initiated it. And I think ultimately yeah. it does look like he looked for it. And of course, absolutely. And that's why I was saying what I was saying earlier about if it gets given as a penalty initially, it doesn't get overturned. If it doesn't get given as a penalty, that doesn't get overturned mm. either. It's quite clear, oh, but there's contact. So you can't say he's diving. There's mm-hmm. definitely contact. And uh, it was interesting. Has he looked you, for it? Uh, I th- I, obviously, initially, I think he's looked for it. I hadn't seen the angle that I'm seeing there, though, because it does We've look like... have got a like, photo in front of us. I've got Yeah, but it does look like... That looks like Noyes really stuck a leg out. It, but it must be, it might be the angle. Obviously, I don't feel like we saw that on the video, on the, on the, on the footage that we saw in the coverage of the game. Um, but, you know, uh, from the angle that we did see, it looks like Bakayo has stuck his leg out. And I understand why he's done it. You know, it's the dying embers of the game. You're trying to get a goal. Gamesmanship, It's like probably, I said, he's probably thought, I'm yeah. not going to make a, a massive effort to move my body out of the way. Yeah. Um, if I get if I get clattered. But the problem is, it does look like he's looked for it a little bit. 56%. Uh, 54% disagree with us though because they've said Saka should have got a penalty 46% do agree Kenny with a very generous super chat um, hasn't put any words in there but um, just send one so thank you very much uh, there was another super chat uh, David Laver says deluded like always see you in Munich this might be a Bayern fan uh, <laughs> Stefan says uh, 
Uh, okay, I don't know what that means. I'm not going to read it. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, that's pretty much it. Let's see what the comments in general are saying. Kingsley saying that was a penalty. Um, Funny Hat says that's always a pen versus Arsenal. Hey. He's got a point. Harvey Elliott. <laughs> So people online are asking what's the difference between Harvey Elliott and the Saka one? I'll tell you what the difference is for me, but I appreciate there might be other angles. I might be getting this wrong. I think Harvey Elliott's one against United, Wamba Saka has made a reckless challenge. And so ultimately, the yeah. ref's given it. Wamba Saka's made a reckless challenge. Now on review, Elliott does look like he's stuck his leg out. Well, no, he has. He's bought it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the reckless challenge, plus it was given, they're never going to overturn that. And we have to acknowledge that while I don't like the rule, they're not there to re-referee. They're only going to overturn if it's a complete and utter howler. And given that decision for Liverpool wasn't a complete howler. Yeah. Now tonight, Neuer, I know this photo looks like he's stuck a leg out, but every yeah. angle it can look a bit different. I don't think Neuer's done that much wrong. It's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not a howler in the sense that it's it's a, like a clear. And the refs not giving it, say. so they're probably not going to overturn it. And so I, listen, look, I can look, see why they're not at, giving it. Look at the it. image again. He could be, you know, he could be going backwards. I I, I understand there's different ways of interpreting it, but for me, I just don't feel like there was probably enough in it from Manuel Neuer. Yeah. To, yeah. All right, we've got one final super chat. Uh, DDMK says, Stonewall pen for Bayern handball by Gabriel. Uh, keeper passes it to him after the whistle is blown. Oh, it was the whistle, whistle blown. I didn't, because I, I was watching it, I couldn't really tell. And Gabriel picks it up. Yeah, fine. And I think I just saw a Tuchel quote saying that the referee told him he should have had a penalty for that. So there we go. Well, that evens Balances it out for out. some then. Um, Bijou says, why is Saliba always weird in Champions League games? I agree. He didn't look himself mm. tonight. Let's get the next call and actually talk about the defensive performance. Who? It's a Bayern fan. He did box to box. Hey, we met outside the ground. How are you, mate? I'm not doing so bad yourself. Yeah, not bad. Tell everyone your name and your channel. Everyone go subscribe. I know buying yeah, yeah. content, so, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, my name's Liam. Uh, I run the Buying View. Um, I did Box the Box with Turkish. Uh, thank you to everyone that has come over. And um, yeah, man, I'm just here to give my thoughts on the game. No, it's a pleasure to have you, mate. And look, um, okay, I, I want to get like a really honest opinion from you on how Arsenal played tonight. Um, was there a part of you that thought... Oh, we're hanging on here, or did you think Arsenal were underwhelming for all the hype? Do you? I mean, you've been in this Champions League stage for a long time, so you know it's not as cut and dry as one team's on good form, one team's on bad form. So, how do you see it? Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. For me, um, uh, in the in the video and everything, I was I was expecting to get absolutely slapped. I won't lie. Wow. Okay. Um, and then um, I knew that Bukayo Saka would get a goal, and of course, he gets the first one. <laughs> uh, and then. Um, and then we, we turn up. So I think you guys were a bit underwhelming, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, you got the 2-2. The um, I just personally think Bayern could have won that game, personally. Well, with Coman hitting the post, with the penalty yeah. that we're now seeing and hearing he should have had, uh, with some of the transition moments. But at the same time, I'm proud of Arsenal. It's, this is, it's a contradiction, but I thought we were defensively a mess compared to how good we've been defensively in 2024. However, I'm also proud of the way that, despite how messy it was, players stood up to it, really. And actually, for a lot of that game, we nullified you just by having most of the ball and trying to play most of the football. Yeah, yeah, no, most definitely. Uh, I thought you were going to be... Uh, um a lot better defensively so I agree with you that, that mm. you were messy and that's that's the thing that like I'm I'm confident going into the uh, the Munich game uh, with the 2-2 but at the same time you guys weren't as good as you can be if that makes sense yeah. that's the thing that scares me because yeah. if you do try to turn up against us obviously we're going to have our fans there but if you do turn up against us then then what like what's going to happen are we going to waste the occasion you guys you know so, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, how does this game look different at the Allianz you know Bayern, I am imagining, will want to play more. Um, but what does that mean for Arsenal in terms of... I've been talking, I don't know if you caught earlier the stream, but I said clarity is a big thing in football when you're going into games. And I think Arsenal know that the job is actually to keep Bayern out. Everyone keeps saying we have to win there. No, we don't. I mean, if, if we draw in 120 minutes of football, then, you know, it's a bit of a lottery who goes through. I, I don't think we have to win there. I think we can. I think we can create transition moments. We don't have to necessarily get on the ball and play. So how do you expect the game to go next week? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, I think if you guys can go there and get an early goal against us, you know, we had Eric Dyer at centre-back. 
you know, uh, I don't know what our manager's doing. I don't know why we've got him there, He's to on the be way honest out. with you. But yeah, no, 100. Um, so if you guys can get an early goal, um, then I'll be I'll be more shaken, uh, to be honest. But I'm expecting Bayern to have more, more of the possession. Um, and I'm hoping for Bayern to get some early goals in there. Um, we need to show, you know, that we are buying. You know, we have not been nowhere near what we should have been this season uh, yeah. under Tuchel. But um, two two, not so bad. No, fair enough. Frank, any question for the opposition? That's a good question. Um... I know I've thrown him in there. I've thrown him in there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, I don't think I do. No, fair enough. No. I'll ask. I'll ask you one more then. A buying going through. Uh, for me, yes. I think Bayern will go for it, yes. And actually, let me squeeze one more in there. <laughs> Have Arsenal come a long way? Are we going in the right direction? You, you, you've been a fan when with the ten-two and the, you've come to the Emirates and walked it. Are, are we on? Are we on right track? I think so, um, personally. But I think the, the the problem for Arteta and Arsenal is you guys have to get over the line. If it's in the Champions League, if it's in the Premier League, just to show you know what you've got, that makes any sense. Yeah, it sets the trend for future ones. So I hear it, mate. It's an absolute pleasure. Everyone, go subscribe to Buy and View, right? Yes, the Buy and Thank View. You. Go subscribe there, mate. Big thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll chat next week. One hundred percent, mate. In a bit, in a bit. Uh, we've got a super chat. Uh, Jane Mon says, watching other sports, when you get to the quarters, semis or finals, rest won't call those close ones. If Saka didn't cut it so far away, it probably looks more like a foul. Now, I know no one wants to hear this, but I think there's something in that. Now, you know when McAllister and Doku had the, the penalty for Liverpool that wasn't given late in the game of the Etihad? No one wants to hear this. I'm not saying it's right. It, this, is, this is an observation, explanation, not justification. But I actually believe that sometimes officials go, unless we are 100% sure when it's this late in a game, we're likely not going to give it. They have to be absolutely sure it's a pen to give it that late in the game because the ramifications are huge. Yeah. And if they get it wrong, and I'm not saying that's right, it's yeah. just a just it's just an explanation. But I think there might have been a little bit of that of where course. you might have just gone, I don't know for sure that you didn't die, so I'm not giving it this. It could be, but then the, the argument there is that's them trying to protect themselves. The game's not about them. It's about making sure the right decisions are made at all times. You know, you can't go into a game not wanting to make a decision to protect yourself and protect your team. Yeah, I hear it. But I also don't want any excuses from Arsenal fans Absolutely. on this because yeah. we've now established it could and should have been a penalty each way at best. So and even, I'm still not yeah. sure we deserved one. Um, I also believe that really we didn't do enough to cut through them. We didn't do enough to really hurt them. I think we had a lot of the ball. We keep them pinned in. But did we do a lot? I actually thought we looked quite erratic. So... I think a draw was fair. If I'm re the reason I'm not gutted about this, yeah, I've seen us draw games where I thought, how have we thrown this away? We've been all over them. How have we done this? I think Bayern were worthy of a point. I do. I, th I think while we played most of the football and had the better chances and limited them to nothing for a lot of the game, I thought they were good in transition. I thought they were organised and I thought they always had us backpedalling and worrying. And, you know, we didn't quite handle the occasion. It's not just about what Bayern did, it's about what we did. I don't think we handled the occasion that well. Mm -hmm. So I think a 2 2 is probably fair, but I think we can we can do it. Um, who's our next caller? I did just hear Steve. Steve's joining us. Steve, how are you, my friend? Hello, Steve. Hey, how are you guys? James, Frank. Yeah, good, good, good. Let me, let me, I want to get your in depth thoughts, but I just want to, because I always love hearing your thoughts. Let me just give you some quick fire ones quickly. Man of the match. Sure. Jesus. Jesus, love it. Yeah, fair enough. He was second to Erdogan for me. Um, did we deserve the win or 2-2 two -two draw fair? I think it's fair. I agree. Penalty on Saka? No. I agree with you on all of those. Nice. Carry on. <laughs> Give us your thoughts on everything. <laughs> no, you know, I had a couple points and in, in I'm going to start off with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people just doom and gloom. You know, we drew at the Emirates. I personally... I personally didn't think we played terrible. Like I, yeah. I, I walked out of that game thinking, you know, we played, we played the game, and we had some mental lapses, right? And that's what ultimately, you know, came out with the draw. But 
you know, I, I'm going to preface to something that you mentioned actually, James, in, in one of the, the videos leading up to the game is, you know, you had talked about that Arsenal was going to have to go through kind of this, like, a like a mental hurdle, I think is the words you used. Right. Yeah. And when I watched the video, you know, I thought, yeah, I think he's spot on. And at the time I thought, you know, maybe that mental hurdle is going to be that first half. But now that the game is over, because I, and I will say, because I am very confident that we are going to go and we're going to win and we're, we're going to the next round. And the reason I say that is because I believe that the mental hurdle was this first game. And it kind of played in our hands that we were at home because I feel that it, things could have gone very wrong if we had a mental lapse, mental hurdle in Germany and things could have got out of control. And can I cut you an and ad? Just, and if we tried to fix that at the Emirates, getting all emotional with the crowd, it could exactly, have got messier. Exactly. Let's carry on. Exactly. Exactly. You're, you're, man, you're spot on. And so when I, when I look at this in, in totality, I think number one, mental hurdle, we've passed that. I saw some good things from the team. I think there's some tweaks that need to happen in the lineup because Byron is very, very fast. Mm -hmm. So Kivior had a bad game, but Kivior, I mean, in all, in reality, he's going to get smoked down that line. He just doesn't have the pace. And at the same time, with that being said, while I like that Jorginho was in the lineup to start the game, I think he's a little bit too slow. Now, how can we fix that? I don't know because Party came in and he he didn't look great. You know, he he didn't look great. But what I will say is we showed some fight, man. Any other time we roll over and this is just it's gone completely bad, right? And I feel like in the second half we came back, we were composed, we kind of settled in a little bit and, and sure you know we could we could have lost to hit the post we could have got lucky Saka could have got the pen called and and here we go now we win the game so all in all i just think a 2-2 draw was was fair and the other thing that i would i want to say is you know everyone was just oh yeah byron we got byron we're gonna smoke them this they're terrible in the league i don't know why people keep saying that you know this isn't the league you know this is this is a completely different tournament this is this is what they're fighting for for their season basically so you can't compare byron in the bundesliga to byron in the champions league and the the last thing that i'll say before i kind of hear what you guys have to say is you know we we begged and we and we were moaning and crying that you know we don't want a team like atletico madrid you know we don't want somebody to just sit back sit back sit back well guess what we didn't get that and we ended up getting countered pretty bad by a team that's got a lot of a lot of pace. So, you know, careful what you wish for is what I would say. And I'll leave it at this. The one thing is Alfonso Davies is out of the next match. So that is one. huge for them. That is huge. That, that is, is huge. huge. Yeah, well, in fact, we've still got Rafael Guerrero to worry about. Though. Well, so Jamon's still... actually asking Super Chat who steps yeah, into Alfonso. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think Guerrero, he's a good player. Obviously, yeah, he's not got the pace of Alfonso mm. Davies, but he's definitely got the defensive yeah. ability. And I think, you know, that that, that, that Guerrero versus Saka matchup is still going to be an interesting one. Obviously, I understand that, you know, Pacayo Saka potentially has the better opportunity to get a Guerrero, but I think that actually Guerrero is actually slightly better defensively than Alfonso Davies. And obviously, don't get me wrong, Davies is still a fantastic defender, but I think nine times out of his 10, out of 10, sorry, his pace gets him out of a lot of situations. Guerrero hasn't got that pace, but Kyle Saka has. And I feel like that's where we can start to capitalize on Bayern Munich. Because I don't yeah. feel, especially when he got the yellow card today, obviously we already knew that he was out of that second leg, but I just, I don't understand why we don't, attack that player that's on the yellow card in hope of you know but I, 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 I they'd call me crazy but I can't help but feel that it would have helped us if Bayern would have gone down to 10 men today no no of course it would have there but I, I, oh, I yeah. actually think is Davis is no joke of a left back Steve I, I agree so much with what you've said and, and I think ultimately my takeaway from this is people need to stop 
looking at football on paper. I don't know why yes. fans keep falling into this trap. It's so annoying. And I and I said it in all my previews. I predicted a 2-1. I think, and I'm not just trying to gas myself up here, I think that game, 2-2 was fair, but I think it was like a 2-1-ish game where, look, we make I an error, we give away a pen. But they had some counters. They probably should have another pen. Like, they were, pro- they were worthy of a goal. We were worthy of maybe two. When you think of the Ben White chance, we didn't do much more than that. Ultimately, trust our scores. I think that was pretty much the way the game went. I had no point thought that we were going to obliterate Bayern because why exactly. would we? Why would we? When, exactly. When they have been here before. They're used to it. These players are no joke. They have done it time and time and time again. Hurricane might not have won anything, but he's pretty much achieved everything else he can in the game. You know, the yeah. captaining, <laughs> captaining his club, scoring as many goals as possible. He's become the complete striker. He's the best number nine in world football. You know, Sane, yeah. Gnabry, yeah. Coman comes on. And I just, it annoys me that there was this naivety that like, you know, I nearly, I didn't, but I nearly made a video on whether Bayern's form was a bad thing for Arsenal going into this game because, because I keep using this word clarity. Bayern didn't go into this going, God, we all worked hard in our chase for the Bundesliga on the weekend. You know, now we've got to refocus for this. The minute they were through to down to Heidenheim, they probably went, oh, well, Leverkusen have won it. We better show up at the Emirates. And it just annoys yeah. me that people just don't, realize that football just doesn't work on paper like that and it showed tonight but steve just yeah. a final word because we're going to take our next caller you think we're going through right oh i'm 100 and your prediction i think it'll be like a 2-1 game that was a crap clap that was a crap <laughs> clap as well maybe, just, maybe it's not a bad clap but my headphones are no i just can't clap all right mate I'm going to clap for you. You're brilliant as always. Thank you for joining Thank us. You, See you guys. Uh, we've got two more. Let's just take the super chat. This club still has a mental block on the biggest stage. And it's very concerning. We were poor, not confident going to the Allens. Milligan, 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 Milligan. Don't be concerned. They're a young team. They're getting used to this for the first time. We are going to have a lot of success um, in the coming years. Don't you worry about it. Who's our next caller? Who have got joining us? Charlie. Charlie, how are you doing? How's it going? You all right? Yeah, very good, mate. Good to have you on. Um, we are... I'm so sorry to do this. We're, we're, we're sort of coming to the end of the show, but we really want to get your thoughts. Um, so what what in particular do you want to talk about? What is your kind of main thought coming out of this game? Is it the penalty incident? Is it our performance? Where do you want to focus the conversation? So, so the, the first thing is, was the goal. I feel like when you see Gabriel took his first touch, he... He turned and he wanted to pass to the keeper. And then when he realised that mm-hmm. uh, the keeper was on top of him, he couldn't do it. So then having Harry Kane right behind Jar, it just Panic panicked stations. him. Yeah. So when he turned around to pass the ball, it just threw everyone out of sync because it is unlike the way we've been playing. So when he turned around 100%. and tried to play the ball, it, it was out of it, uh, sheer panic, you know? I totally and, agree with you. And I was disappointed because I went down the pub to watch a game and to see how we was playing. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of chances, but then when we did and Saka got it and scored, it was one of them that we took the most for once of the chances that we did have. To give away a silly goal like that was disappointing. And then, literally, I feel I feel like the, the keeper was the one that let us down at first, you know? Um, yeah. But... Yeah. I feel like at, at times we couldn't get out. You know, like when we played Man City, we just soaked in the pressure and we couldn't get out and, and do what we normally do. I felt like that, that was what we'd done in this game. I thought we were going to get um, like a Porto away, you know, like where we just soak it up, soak it up. But I was happy to see that we didn't do that, you know. But it just showed at times they, was, they had better players than what we did. You know, like our Mane um, just cut through us all. You know, to get give away the penalty. Yeah, the, and and also that mistakes are punished when we tried to yeah. 
go the other way and win it in Porto. Literally. They got the ball and Galeno put it into the you yeah. know far corner. And then this one, you know, two you're mistakes, right. Two goals. Right, David Raya that, that quickly. gets it wrong. But yeah. then you're thinking, okay, Arsenal should still be fine from this position. And then cutting yeah. pass, cutting pass, finish through the legs. And you're like, wow, yeah. you really could have only put those three kicks of a football in one place and all three they got right. And you're like, that's the yeah. quality. That is why I tell everyone... Please shut up about Bayern's form. We know Bayern's form is bad. And ultimately, we saw that because I'm looking at things like field tilt stats and no one really gives a shit about it. And I get it. And other and things, statistically, we were better than them. We were on the ball. But they're cutting and they are experienced. And I'm going to say one thing. I know I've, I've, I met you last pre-season. I know mm. you're all, all good with statistics and stuff like that. I'm going to ask you one question of this. Curtis said uh, before he went... At the end of the day, they're out of every competition. So the only competition they're going to go in is the Champions League. So don't Absolutely. take any notice of they've been beat on the weekend or they've this and that because they've got nothing to play for. So the Champions League is all they can play for. Plus, I said to someone the other day, uh, today at work, I went before I left them, Harry Kane in every North London derby is he rather scores a last minute goal or he scores a penalty. Now, I'd like you to get me the statistics because I watch you on every Forever Thank Arsenal you. and that. What is the statistics of Harry Kane scoring a last-minute goal or a penalty? He scores all the time. North well, eight, eight, Derby. eight yeah. out of his 15 that he scored against us have been penalties. Well, there you so, go. I think yeah. You're fine. yeah. Well, there you go. So, uh, you, you imagine Gabriel takes the ball out and to one side, goes to pass it to the keeper, realises the keeper's on top of him, can't play that ball and now he's thinking Harry Kane's up my arse now he's panicking you know that that you don't see that a lot now in Arsenal and he's panicked and then put the ball out and then it's gone from there but what I'm saying is when you watch Arsenal didn't have many chances you know because at times they look a lot better than us and maybe the world class players look like it was a night and day difference but maybe I could be wrong but what I'm saying is when we did have our chances, we sort of half took them like the second chance and stuff like that. But normally we we, we need to have a load more chances to score goals. That second one, you'd probably go, like Ben White, I don't blame him because he's a defender. He's done yeah. well in the past and he's, and he's scored when he's got it. I don't blame him for that at, at all. Yeah, if he did score, we'd probably have put him to bed or whatever. But I don't blame him. He's had a shot. A lot of the time, we don't even shoot. We try to pass the ball. And now... <laughs> when we try to pass the ball, it ends up getting intercepted and then you go, why didn't he show, you know? But he I hear it. took a chance. You know? I hear it. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Call cool back again yeah. and um, yeah, look, we take it to the Allianz for another game. Cheers. Take In a care. bit, my friend. Bye, yeah. bye. Final caller of the night, who's joining us? Dino. How you doing? Dino. How you doing, James? Frank, you know what it is, Frank? You can call you me Steve today. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> AFCC, <laughs> Robbie needs to get you a show. Oh, That's right, what it we is. Go. We know he has the information. You have the information station. Uh, uh, James has tactical insight. <laughs> he has forever arsenal. We need to get you a show. Live, live with the Frank. There we go. Hey, live man. with the Frank, yeah. Hey, make Robbie, it happen, Robbie. Robbie, will make it happen. <laughs> uh, do you think, do you think Barnes should have had a penalty? I'm just watching it here. They're saying that Raya played it out to Gabriel. Uh, have you seen what we're talking about? Raya rolls out to Gabriel and he, he touches it with his hand to restart the goal kick. I mean, people might say that's... Well, that is technically a penalty, I agree. However, it's like he's, he, he's just retaking... The, he's taking the goal kick. Like, do we care? Let's move on. I don't know. Have you seen the incident I'm talking about? The, the incident you're talking about doesn't really ring a bell. The incident that does ring a bell... Yeah. is the very last kick yeah. of the game for yeah. me. Right? Now, James, I hear your take on it. Um, you you don't necessarily feel like it was a penalty, but then it could be given if it was outside of the box, which is what I believe that you were trying to say. However... No, is that, I, I think I he looked it, for it. I think he looked for contact, Saka. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But the, the keeper, right? Manuel Neuer. He's known for being a sweeper keeper, right? He did he not jump out of his lines? I think Saka was trying to get control of the, of the ball. Um, I think he was trying to get it around him and then kind of like, you know, kick the ball in the empty net. And I feel like he was obstructed by Neuer. 
Maybe it's my Arsenal bias, but I feel like he was obstructed. There's definitely contact. There's no arguing that. I don't think Noy is great. I don't think Noy is perfect on it. But the problem is, the minute Bakar Saka looks like he's made a movement to initiate contact, then the, they've got every right to go, you've looked for it, we're not going to give it. Okay. Fair I enough. don't know. But, but, but by the way, may I say, we ran a poll. Still going. 7,500 votes wow. and 53% agree with you. So just because I don't agree, I mean, I'm sat here with a mic. Doesn't no, no. Mean I'm not talking shit. Hey, so, you're very objective. Yeah. I, listen, I love the way how you're professional. You handle your thing very professional. No, I appreciate and, that. You know, that's fine. Maybe I'm being a little biased. Um, I don't think we kept our normal shape today. No, we didn't. I you're think Saliba, yes, he, he, Saliba was playing in every position. He was all over the place today. I think Mikel Arteta just kind of just set him down. He underestimated uh, Bayern Munich. But I think in the second leg, we're gonna have we're gonna keep our shape, and we're gonna play phenomenal football in the second leg. So stay tuned. All right, mate. I hope you're right. What's your score prediction to round it off? Round off the show with a positive score My prediction. My score prediction for the second leg. I feel like we win one nil. I was going to say the same. Well, Let's see what happens after much, Villa, but I think we might do that. Let's see what happens. Big up, guys. Love Class you, call. Guys. Thank care. you, mate. Thank you so Take much care. for joining us. All right. And that rounds off the callers, guys, and our show. Um, I think the tone from everyone is frustration, but no one's, no one's like, apart from hands at the beginning, no one's like gutted <laughs> like, oh, my God, what a terrible night. And he wasn't saying that, to be fair. Yeah. But like, what a terrible night. We've thrown it away. I think there's a, oh, we could have done more. But I think we know where we could have done more. I think we also know where we can hurt them out there. And on we go. Like, you know, when you get to this stage of competition, every single club in it thinks we should have done better. Yeah. Now, Man City, from one and up and three to up at the Bernabeu, we're thinking, how do we throw away and not come out with a win? The game, the so, uh, Real Madrid will think for all the chances they've missed, yeah. they'll be thinking, how are we not? You know, how do we not win this? And how are we not going back to the Etel with a win? But then this is the treble win. And the thing is, we're at the highest level where there's not a lot between these teams and it's going to be moments. Our moments didn't happen. Hopefully they do in the second leg. I'm confident we can go through. And all eyes on Villa now. Yeah. I mean, I think we're... I've, you know, uh, it's weird because it, whilst I'm still quite happy about the draw and the fact that we managed to get that draw, it, I can't help but think it feels like a little bit of a loss considering, you know, a lot of it us... It feels disappointing. Disappoint, that, right, cool. It doesn't feel like a way. loss to me. It, it, uh, maybe a loss is a bit strong, but yes, absolutely yeah. disappointing. And I feel like we need to get a fairly convincing win in response to this just mm -hmm. to keep the fans happy ahead of the against Villa league, against Villa yeah I think we need to I don't, I don't think Villa can be anything like this a basketball match I don't think Villa can be end-to-end -end stuff yeah. open they have loads of chances we have yeah. loads of chances we go 1-0 down but we find a way to no, win it 2-1 so. I think we've got to get back to the professionalism of the 100%. last few performances if we, can, if we can just like Brighton if we can get a 2-3-0 against Aston Villa I think fans will be over the moon with that considering right. they're right. having a fantastic season as well admittedly mm -hmm. dropping off a little bit but it's still an Aston Villa side that have had a great season we can get two, three, and a win there. Keep that clean sheet. Get the confidence back up from the fans again. Go into that second leg against Bayern Munich. There's absolutely no reason at all that we still can't go through to the semi-finals. Look, if you're unbeaten in 2024, except for that, you know, game against uh, Liverpool, and your draws have been against Bayern and City, you're probably doing something right because as much as they stopped us, we stopped them. So it's not a win. It's disappointing, but we can go on and win this tie. I'm confident we can. Missed opportunity, perhaps, but it's only half time. Frank, it's always been a pleasure having the show with you. Thank you all for calling and joining. Um, and we'll be back with Forever Arsenal. It won't be tomorrow. It'll actually be in a couple of days' time. On Thursday, of course, we'll look ahead to Villa and react to this. The fan cams are coming out, and there'll be more. We'll do a tactical insight on this game as well, or at least just give some thoughts on what happened tactically to Arsenal in this game, because I do think Arteta tried something different. I don't really think it worked, though. Everyone, we'll catch you soon.